Tim Iden. I am here with uh, Mike Selmer in the City of Peoria Fire Station 197, and we are getting ready for the holidays. You guys ready for Thanksgiving? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Me, too. So we want to make sure that everybody out there has a good and safe holiday. Our call volume is highest a few times a year, and one of those is Thanksgiving. So we don't want to go out on those calls. We want to stay home on Thanksgiving and enjoy our time, and we want you to be safe on Thanksgiving, too. So we're going to go over some real simple tips today, and we're also going to cook ourselves a holiday meal. So let me introduce Mike Selmer. Mike, uh, what's your position with the City of Peoria Fire Department? I'm the Public Information Officer for Peoria Fire Medical. I've um, been on the job for 18 years. Uh, my, my rank is engineer. I've been in this position for maybe two months now, so it's all new to me. Uh, doing a live event like this is even newer, so I'm having fun. And we got Scott McAllister here. Scott's our cook. Scott, say hi to the public. Hey, guys. What are we making today, Scott? So obviously for Thanksgiving, we're preparing a turkey. This year we're doing a deep fried turkey. Uh, and then we're, we've got the typical stuffing. We're doing some green beans. And Guillermo, you've got some fancy potatoes, right? Oh, some bread, some simple potatoes for the guys to whip up. And we have Guillermo over here, uh, who is going to be our, our sous, sous chef. chef. Yeah, he's our sous Absolutely. chef. Anybody with the whisk is the sous chef. That's mm -hmm. how you know they're doing Easiest it. Easiest job. So I want to start talking about our fire station a little bit. Um, a lot of people have never been in a fire station before. The first thing they notice is three refrigerators. Right. Do you guys eat that much? What's going on with that? <laughs> we typically have three refrigerators because we have three different shifts, A, B, and C shift. In this particular case with our station here, we don't really have it divided up that way, but we still utilize everything. We put all of our condiments in one, and then all of our leftovers in another, and then all of our grocery shopping that we get that day in the third one. So it's pretty organized for us, but we do need three refrigerators because there's 12 guys here and a lot of food. So there's three different shifts. So we have 12 crew members every day are in this station? Well, we have eight crew members in the station okay. every day. So that's 24 total in this particular station. But most of our stations have four people per day, three different shifts. Gotcha. You guys, I'm assuming, we have eight I'm assuming you guys eat a lot. So that's probably why we need, uh, we need three refrigerators. Exactly. Very good. So you guys live here then at this fire station? This is your home? We are here for 48 hours at a time. We work 48 hours and we're off 96 hours. We have an engine here and a ladder company. So we are here, we're away from our families one third of our lives. We spend it right here. That's why we have a full blown kitchen. We have a laundry room, we have, beds, on deck. we have a living room. It's just like home away from home. I gotta ask, cause these fridges are stuffed with food. Is the city paying for you guys to eat all this? No, the city does not pay for any uh, of our food. Basically we put in $25 Operation each immense. per tour for 48 hours. And then we go shopping and we buy all of our food for the two days. And then whatever money is left over from that food goes to what we call our kitty. And our kitty provides all of our condiments and extra things that we need other than our day-to-day -day food that we buy. That's good to know. So you guys are paying for your own food. Speaking of which, let's go take a look over here because I'm dying. Scott, you want to tell me what's going on over here while he stirs? So yes, yeah, so right what now, what is that? We are working on some homemade stuffing. So uh, we have some bread some bread that's already been diced up and cubed up and dried out. And now Guillermo has added some carrots, some celery, some garlic. Uh, I'm just uh, chopping up some uh, rosemary and thyme. We're going to add that. There we go. Perfect. And there's sausage in there. Is that like a particular recipe to you? or? Yeah, so, um, so this is a sausage uh, stuffing meal, right? Because firefighters, we, you know, we're not vegan. So we like to add meat to everything. So yeah, that, that's... Uh, one of the guys that uh, wanted to be here, actually Brad Wharton, it was his idea to add some sausage, and so um, so we did. We went for it. We're going to add some fresh parsley. That's the same thing that happens to us whenever we're on tour, on ship. We have to get those calls. We have to stop what we're cooking. Things can be in the oven. We have to shut it all down. It happens all the time. We'll sit down to the table right when it first comes out. Call, kick out, and that's just what we have to do. So it's just part of our job. We have our first call from our uh, viewing public. So thank you out there uh, to everybody who's watching. Our first question is, uh, what is your most common call on Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is a huge day for, for you know the firefighters, obviously. You guys are busy. What's your most common call? Well, you would think that, that we would have more fires and more choking because, because of the holidays and yeah. all the eating going and all the cooking. but. Thanksgiving is really quiet for us. It's okay. pretty much just another average day for us. So it's pretty surprising, but that's true. 
That's good. That's good. But we want everyone out there to be safe well uh, while cooking for the holidays. So Absolutely. I, I want to talk about that stove. I really do. But every time I do that, I look over here at what they're cooking. So I hear you. I'll come back one more time. Guillermo, have you had this stuffing before? You know what? I have not. This is going to be my first this time. This going to be your first time? Oh, yeah. Is there like a secret to good stuffing, Scott? Um, just put a whole lot of love. Love is the key. Right? I mean, you need love and everything. So love is the key. Um, oh my goodness, that looks tasty. I'm kind of looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to that being all done. You want love in there so that people don't choke on the stuffing, right? That's yeah. Hey, speaking of which, I was not planning on talking about that, but I got. I'm surrounded by firefighters. <laughs> I'm in the middle of my Thanksgiving meal and I'm choking. You want to tell me what people are supposed to do? Did you pat me on the back? What are you supposed to do if someone's choking? Well, if it's a child or something, mm -hmm. you want to pat them on the back pretty hard, but right. turn them around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure Look right, bl now. right below the sternum right here, yep. using your thumb and your hand right here. I could do it to him right now, should I? Oh, don't do it! Oh. I take it right in there. <laughs> believe it or not, that will just pop it right out. Yeah, right out. I, yeah. I, believe I mean, that. I could have did it just a little bit and you'd feel it actually. Yeah, I, I do. I, I felt that for sure. So, But what if you're by yourself? That's a good question. Do you you're know what to do? If you're by yourself, you can put yourself up to, on a chair yeah, okay. and put right. it right here below the sternum area right there and just push yourself into that chair as hard as you can and it, it tends to knock it out. I have so to do this all fine like you know myself. I really have, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, we we always say if you're gonna have to do a self heimlich, like dial nine one one first. What do you tell them if you call nine one one? Well, that is a trick know. question. They're we'll choking. You can't tell them anything. You just say. <laughs> I was gonna say they're, when they call nine one one, they're calling me. <laughs> you can't say anything. You're choking. That's true. All right, let's go. We're plated over here. We're plated so. Are we going to bake this? What are we doing with this next? Yep, so now it's going to go in the oven at 400 degrees. Yeah, what are we I'm, doing next? So we are going to get ready to get going on potatoes, right? You've got some red potatoes, We actually caramel. just pre-cut just to kind of uh, make things go a little bit smoother. So if you look here, we actually just diced up some red potatoes, uh, some red bell peppers and onions, a little bit of olive oil, uh, pepper and salt. Basically all you need is some garlic powder. And uh, basically what you do is you either Cook them on the flat iron or saute them in a pan. 15 to 20 minutes, covered if you'd like. It cook a little bit faster, um, and it plays a good role as far as you know a good sturdy um, side for to go with your turkey. We got some watchers out there. Hey, I just want to say hello and thank you for watching. We have some more good content. Uh, we've got uh, Diana, Luis, Esteban, Teresa. We're watching out there. So hello. I hope you learned something today. And I want to head over to the <coughs> stove. This stove is hot. So number one cause of home fires in the country is kitchen in fires. the kitchen. Yeah, it's in the kitchen. So what can we do here to keep from having those kitchen fires? Give me some safety tips for kitchen fires. Well, what you want to do is see the grease build up around the areas there and up here. You want to. You want to keep that area clean. This is pretty clean, but it can get real bad. So you want to keep that area clean of the grease. Um, some other things have an extinguisher well, close sorry. by because if you do have a fire that ensues up here, if it's bigger than a bread box, then you want to call 911. But if it's smaller than that, and you can put a wet towel over it and put it out, or use your extinguisher to put it out. So I'm cooking. Uh, you guys have some oil and grease over here going before. You can still see it left over in that pot. And that lights on fire. People's first reaction is to try to pick it up. What happens? Yeah, you'll burn yourself. Do right. not pick it up. Absolutely do not pick it up. What if I throw it, it in the so sink? Do not. You don't want to mix that grease and wire. It yeah, causes a, you just spread that fire all over the place. If, the, if it's bigger than a bread box, if you're seeing black smoke coming from it, get out of that kitchen, call 911. Cool. Why am I throwing a towel on it? That seems like you're throwing something yeah. flammable on a fire. What does that do? Well, a wet towel. You don't want to have water on it, but a wet towel will take the oxygen away from the fire, and then that fire will go out. Gotcha. You could also use a lid. So we're trying to like a smother lid would work it, right? too, yes. A lid. All right, now I've heard this before. I don't know if this is true. I go over to my cabinet, I grab some baking powder or flour or something, and I just throw it on there. I'll no, put it that, right out, right? That will not work. Okay. I'll just spread it even more. So don't use any baking powder. Don't use any flour. Just cover it up if you can, or use a wet towel over it. And that's pretty much all you can do. Or get future. out and call 911, right? Let the professionals do it. Absolutely. Don't burn yourself. Just get out and, you know. We'll uh, be there your, and Your kitchen three cabinets to four minutes. are replaceable. And absolutely. Your kitchen cabinets are replaceable. Your lies are not. Right on, right on. So, um, oven. We're putting everything in the oven. I got my favorite apple pie that my mother-in-law is making, and I'm really excited about that. Hi, if you're watching. Um, so, 
Stove catches on fire. Oven fire, right? You look in there. Most stoves have a window. You look in there. It's yeah. lighting on fire. Bacon. What's yeah. my first step? Uh, your first step is to leave the door shut. <laughs> Do not what happens if I open it? I well, want to put the fire out. How can I not open it? No, nope. you just let it burn out in there. <laughs> keeping that door shut and keeping that fire in there is, is the only way you can contain it. Shut You'll the have stove off. Shut the stove off. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Yeah. Your stove is metal and it's going to keep it all in there keep it contained for you and keep the fire you don't right in there to, uh, fire the goes out am i good to open speed, it then no no i'd wait a little time it's going to be hot yeah. i would stay away from it as soon as you open it you add yeah. oxygen to that fire right Absolutely. and you're going to reignite and reignite. that's going to get so just let it yeah. let it go get yourself a new stove we'll worry about that everything is better than burns right everything everything is better than burns yes So, Tim, well, should we go outside and see what they're doing out there now? Because we've transferred her from the kitchen. They're out there doing the turkey. I think it's time to take a look at that deep fry in a turkey. If you are going to deep fry a turkey, pretty please with sugar on it. Be careful because that's something that, you know, every year you hear about fires and burns and things like that. So let's go outside and take a look at that deep fried turkey and talk about how to do it the right way. Sounds great. All right, let's do let's it. Go. All right, what do we got going on out here? <clears throat> All right, so we get, we're underway. Guillermo has started his potatoes. Um, he's got red potatoes. Go ahead, what do you got in there, Guillermo? Uh, so I've got some red potatoes, some onions. Uh, basically, so I'll say them until the uh, uh, potatoes are, you know, um, adante, as they say. And um, really just cooking for about 15, 20 minutes. Uh, we're prepping right now the bacon for the green beans. Those green beans are on, our, are on standby. We're going to go ahead and throw them on there as soon as the bacon is somewhat crispy. Uh, gives the green beans a little bit of a better flavor. Um, other than that, uh, just turkey sector, man. Once we're once we're done with this, we're gonna go, we're gonna fry a bird. We're gonna go over some safety procedures, and we're gonna go over uh, ways to properly dip a turkey so nobody gets hurt. Scott, who usually does the cooking on your shift? Is it you because you're good, or is it uh, the low man on the totem pole, or is it Sherry? Well, good is all depending on who, who, I've heard, who believes. I've right? heard so. things, so and I'm looking at your food, and I think they're true. Uh, so, actually, Guillermo is, is uh, not getting enough credit here. He is an amazing cook as well, <laughs> um, and he's got some, some dishes that are just, it, 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 it brings authenticity to his culture, he brings it to the station, and then we're all amazed. Plus, we get, I don't know if you guys have time to do another segment with us, but you got to try his keto tacos. Oh, oh man. That Everybody good. loves tacos. Keto tacos. <laughs> so, uh, Maria on Facebook says, thank you for the advice. So, thank you for the advice. That's great. Uh, we're about to fry that turkey. What, uh, this is a question from one of our users about deep frying a turkey. Uh, what is the best type of oil to use? Does it matter what kind of oil you use? So, it does. So, peanut oil is great, um, unless you're allergic to it, right? And then you want to avoid that. So, uh, if you do have an, a peanut allergy, you could use an alternative like vegetable oil or canola, canola oil as well. So... Um, um, definitely an oil that has a higher smoking point. Um, so typically, uh, uh, obviously peanut oil is one of them. Um, so there's definitely, if you get information, you'll find a oil that has a higher smoking point that way, because a turkey is recommended to be cooked at 350 degrees. Right. Uh, so with an oil that is based at 400 degrees above for a smoking point, it gives you some room to avoid burning the turkey and, uh, and you staying away from a flammable point. Yeah. So we're going to be cooking. I'm cooking at home for my family along with my family. I don't want to pretend I'm doing all the cooking, but it looks like you guys are cooking for a fire station. I mean, that's a lot of food. <laughs> no. Is it different cooking at home than it is cooking Very here? Very much so. Very much so. When I cook at home, uh, I could be done in 15 to 20 minutes, you know, but when cooking for a bunch of guys that uh, have black holes for stomachs, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to probably take up almost, you know, a half a day. You know, uh, especially with us running calls in between, uh, there's definitely times where we just can't get to cooking because, you know, we're doing our job serving the public. And, um, you know, so sometimes it's very important that we keep in mind uh, those conditions. And we try to pick meals that are pretty simple. Yeah. You know, uh, this is a rare occasion. Obviously, we do this because, it's, you know, the holidays. Right. And we all want turkey. Some of us, we, uh, we work for Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving Day, so right. we also want to celebrate, and uh, so we, we work around that, but yeah. Plus, plus, I think we need to cover like one of the most important like unspoken rules of the fire department is that you would never want to run out of food. 
Yeah. So okay. you want to, okay. you, you know, you, you have eight people showing up, you want to cook for 12. Oh, wait, so you mean right. enough for me then, right? <laughs> right, right, okay. right. I'm just making sure because that looks like a lot of food. Hey, uh, someone asked a question on those keto tacos. We mentioned keto tacos. <laughs> oh, no. What do you put the keto taco in? <laughs> oh, that's the highlight of the keto taco. That tacos. is the highlight. I've got to so know, right? <laughs> it is actually, I figured out a way to make street tacos. Okay. Keto friendly. Um, I, I made them once and then blew everybody away. It was more of an experiment of mine because, okay. you know, everybody's trying to eat healthy, trying to cut carbs. Right. Drum but roll. Everybody loves tacos. So what better way to, I ended up figuring out a way to make a, instead of a corn tortilla street taco, okay. I made a eggshell that looks just like a street taco tortilla. Oh, wow. Um, and it actually tastes no different than a regular street taco. If anything, I've gotten compliments saying they taste better. You know, and so Drew, I've got to say for our, our watchers out there, whether you're watching live now or later, um, we are going to have our recipes online. I may talk Guillermo into uh, <laughs> throwing that keto taco one up in there, but we will definitely have uh, this just delicious looking garlic bacon string bean, beautiful food going on. Uh, I think it's time, if you don't mind, if we just go take a look at the deep Absolutely. fryer over here and uh, say hi to Alexis. Alexis, your dad says hi. hi Do you want to? Uh, he wanted to know if uh, if you're going to be doing all this cooking for him on, on Thanksgiving uh, as well. I'm, I'm a vegan <laughs> ah, so no, so I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. There's a few things I want to point out. We've got our oil out here, but we are way away from that fire station. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, we just want to keep. Safe distance from it. Even though we really have this down pat, how we're going to cook this turkey, we know we know we're, um, we're not going to have any kind of accidents. So we still want to bring it away from the station, still be safe with that. So always keep a clear distance from from wherever you're cooking. You want to have a flat area. You want it to be level. You want to use the proper. Amount I noticed that. Oil. Looks like you guys cleared some uh, space out underneath there to make it uh, good and level. Why is that so important? Well, because when you're dipping your turkey in there, you don't want to have any portion of that turkey exposed to the air, so you want it to be completely underneath the oil. Yeah, you don't want to spill that oil either. That spill. would go badly for just about everybody, huh? Oh, yep, that'd be no good. So level is, is so important. Guillermo, what's the heat? What's the temperature on this oil? You mentioned like a smoke point. What does that mean? Yeah, so basically um, smoke point is when the oil gets too hot enough where it starts breaking down to fatty acids, okay. it starts smoking. Uh, and that's all. Uh, that's almost breaking the point to where you're almost getting close to a flammable point. That's okay. when actually the oil ignites. Okay. Um, so, uh, again, uh, peanut oil is rated uh, for safe frying at 350 degrees. Okay, so we're looking uh, right so about 350 looking degrees. About 350. At what point in time, though, when it gets hotter than that, is something bad going to happen? Uh, well, again, uh, you get it. Um, it gets closer to the fire point or the flammable point. So you obviously want to avoid that. So it's important when you have oil heating up, never leave it unattended. Always make sure it stays to 350 degrees. Um, if you need to lower the flame, then do so. Because uh, you don't, again, if it starts smoking, not only is it dangerous, uh, the chemical reaction, when, if anything were to uh, go in there as far as water, yes. or even if the turkey's wet, it's not got any wet pockets in there, it's gonna, flat, it's, it's gonna create a pretty, um, pretty big chemical reaction uh, to the yeah. point where like you mentioned the oil will spill over and it will catch the flames and the whole thing will ignite. Gotcha. Scott I got a question from a user and I know you're our cook today but you're standing by that extinguisher. Um, fire extinguisher can you put a fire like this out with it with that extinguisher right there? What kind of <clears throat> extinguisher should I have? Are there different kinds? Give me a little background. Yeah so there are different classes of fire extinguishers and you don't want to put anything that uh, is uh, the wrong class on oil. That would be your worst mistake right? If you if you put the wrong class on oil, you're going to make a disaster out of your out of your fire. So um, you want this? Uh, what do we got here? A, B, C, a, B, and C's. So basically, this here is a class A and B and C fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. It's rated to put out three different kinds of fires. Uh, class A, which is ordinary combustibles, uh, paper, wood, stuff like that. Uh, class B, which is flammable liquids, which is what we're dealing with here today. And class C, which is electrical fires. Now this this actually here it, it contains a product called. Uh, uh, mono, monomonium phosphate, and it's ba basically a, a clear powder that's ready to put out all three, all three fires. So if you, do, if you have this at home, you're safe. You don't have to worry about having the proper um, extinguisher. extinguisher. Thank it's so you. important that you're able to use it properly, too. And I always tell people, um, 
<laughs> to read the directions before, <laughs> right? Not during the fire. And right. the directions say stand back eight feet. Eight Wh feet. Why am I standing back eight feet? You would think I'd want to get right up there and spray. Right. Again, because you never know the reaction that's going to happen. You want to be at a safe distance. Okay. And for that, we have a technique called pass. Okay. It's called pull, aim, sweep, uh, squeeze, sweep. What am I pulling? Okay. So you're going to pull a pin that's... Uh, that's in the fire extinguisher. That basically holds it from anybody that gets a hand, their hands on it. On accident. In, on accident, or any children that want to say, hey, here's a fire extinguisher, I want to pull it. Okay. Uh, they, won't be able, they won't be able to get that mechanism out. But uh, once you do so, uh, you aim 10 feet away, or uh, eight feet away, sorry. And um, if, it's flam if it's flaming squeeze along, you just, you just squeeze, squeeze till the material projects and you start sweeping so you cover all, every side of the, uh, of the fire. That way there's nothing, it, it helps suppress anything that could uh, be flammable. Got it. And w when in doubt, dial 911, right? Exactly. That's, 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 that's what that's you guys, and you know, I tell people all the time, if, if you know, you dial 911, there's a fire, and by the time we get there, if it's put out, it's like, great. That's super Absolutely. duper. It's better wow. safe than sorry. Pick Absolutely. up that phone, get yeah. us moving, get us out there just in case it turns, Absolutely. It turns and big. Are we getting ready to put a... a so we've got to prep the turkey now. Let's head inside and uh, do some turkey prep. Yeah, all of It looks like they're putting honey on that, uh, yes. on the nuts out there. Boy, that looks good. We want to make sure that what we're doing is safe. So uh, one of the mistakes that people make when they're frying a turkey is that the fryer oil level is too high. So when, you, when they drop the bird, you end up having uh, oil come over and, and get into your flame, and then you get a huge fire and a, and a big, big problem. So we're going to show you a technique that you can do <clears throat> to stay safe. So right now we've got our bird. And the first thing about this is we have been thawing this out for over a day. Um, you want to have one to two days to get this totally thawed out and dry. And then you also uh, can keep in mind that these come with little plastic things to hold the, uh, the legs together. You want to remove all the plastic, the plastic button. You don't want that in, to end up in your fryer. So when it comes to getting ready to prepare your fryer, you want to put, put it in a, in a bag. Again, you don't want this to get wet, right? So you put it in a bag. You're going to drop it in, and you're going to see with water how high that, that level will rise. So also count that whatever that rise is, when it's actually hot at 350 degrees and it starts to boil, it's going to, it's going to boil even higher than that. So um, this would you know, technically not be the right size container, right? We'd have to have something much taller. But just for a way of example, this is how you do it. And then once you see that level, and you're happy that the, the bird is completely submerged in the oil and then you have plenty of room at the top to, to, to also boil, you would then mark that line and then you would fill your, your bucket with oil. So we did that before. So all that was done. So now we're just kind of catching you guys up to where we're at now. Scott, pretty much the worst thing that can happen when you're frying a turkey is that oil overflows, right? Because you put too much in. What's going to happen when that when you drop that turkey in and that oil spills over? What's going to happen? You're going to have a big problem. So, you, you know, it's going to catch fire. Right. And you're going to now expose that propane tank to fire, and you're going to have a really big, big problem. And in addition to that, you could get, you could get burned, right? So that, that oil comes up over that line in your hands there, you could get burned, and then that could cause you to drop it and make it even worse. So this step is really the most important, making sure you get that oil line correct for the size of your turkey, because every turkey is really different, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, to say it's most important, it's, it's really high important on importance, but also equally important is to make sure it's fully defrosted and dry. Good point. Because uh, if it was not defrosted correctly, the same thing would happen. Right. Yep. So, all right. So, and that's what we have here. We have a dry bird, and what we're going to do is we're going to start making a marinade to inject into this bird. Now, typically, you'd want to do this like yesterday or the night before, um, but for today, we wanted to show you what we're doing. So, um, we... Scott, I just want to say real quick that you are raising the bar for Thanksgiving for a lot of us uh, because Mike Selmer's sister-in-law just said you better bring those string beans to our holiday. <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of people watching and they're all, uh, they're all I think, salivating a little bit right now. So. All right. Thank you, Wendy, for watching. <laughs> well, then we're doing, we're doing our job. We're doing it right. Okay, so... Um, yeah. So I brought my Vitamix in, in from home, and for, for this kind of stuff, you really want a good blender that can blend this stuff down, because if you don't, you're not going to be able to inject it. Do you, you see what happened to our injector? Oh, stand by. Stand by. So we, all right, we're going to have to clean that. All right, so 
Right now we're going to take uh, rosemary thyme and sage and we're going to blend it in the dry attachment uh, that I have with my Vitamix. And we're going to reduce this down so that it actually can um, become almost like a powder. Where's the lid to this one at? We're gonna need that. <laughs> I was just thinking that myself with the the blender's not not making a lot of noise. <clears throat> All right, shake it around, try it again. Scott, do you have any training or anything? I mean, this is you, you're doing a good job. You, yeah, that's cooking good. experience, or do you just learn on the job when you're a firefighter? Because otherwise, you know, your captain gets mad at you. Uh, yeah, so um, I actually had some cooking experience growing up. Um, started in the restaurant business at the age of 16. Started in Whataburger, went to hometown buffet, and then I ended up at Outback Steakhouse. Wow. So that's. I learned quite a bit there, for sure. So Guillermo, did you learn from him, or do you have cooking experience I, too? No, I actually uh, grew up cook, doing a lot of cooking at home, yeah. Um, me coming from the Hispanic background, we love to cook. Yeah. Do you and, have a signature dish uh, besides the keto tacos? <laughs> um, you know what? I have, I have quite a few. Yeah, okay. I got quite a few. What's um, your favorite? So if I were to ask one of your family members, what, what, what's your favorite? What's the one that people love the most? Well, actually... Um, them being my family, they always request albondigas. <laughs> what is that? That is actually a meatball soup. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's uh, very hearty, very good, and especially after a fire, man. We need to replenish those, those nutrients. That soup actually gets it going, and it's very delicious. I have someone giving me a thumbs up saying that you, they, they like your soup, so <laughs> you're, you're not lying. Kyle Lane over there, behind the, the camera man, on the, the man behind the camera. All right. Okay. So, Scott, we have to keep this thing dry. I'm assuming then that's why we're injecting something into it? Yeah, so um, so the reason you inject is uh, is twofold, right? So you um, you can get the flavors deep within the meat, right? So we're going to get, we're going to inject deep into the breasts. And typically on the bird, that's one of the most drier part of the, of the, of the, of the turkey. So we're going to be able to inject the flavor right into the bird. Um, and then the other thing too, uh, because we're deep frying, yeah, we don't want to put moisture on this bird as well. So, gotcha. yep. Uh, and we need to get uh, some, where did that, oh, will you grab that, uh, that garlic, that minced garlic from I'm outside? I'm thinking of safety we need tips that. right now, and that, that's a pretty serious injector. Mm -hmm. You remember when your mom told you not to run with scissors? I'm thinking maybe, I'm thinking maybe that's good advice on Thanksgiving too. Yeah, you know, I mean, chew your food whole, right? Because if you don't, you end up with a needle in your arm like this too, right? So. Um, All right. Yeah, yeah, no. Usually you guys are dealing with a different kind of, you know, yeah, needle than you. It's a little, it's yeah, small. Yeah, yeah, wider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, it says right there on your shoulder, paramedic, right? So you, you have oh, yeah. training for that, yes, <laughs> for yeah. that turkey so, baster. Um, the way the fire department works out here in the <clears throat> western hemisphere of the, of, of the country is uh, we are medically trained. And so um, in the, on the east coast, you would have the fire department and EMS separate. Whereas here, 80% of our call volume, 85% of our call volume is EMS related, emergency medical services. So, so yeah, we have on uh, just about every apparatus of the city, we have two paramedics and two EMTs. And so I'm, I happen to be a paramedic and uh, my medic partner is Matt over there, Matt Jingra, I'm trying to throw him under the bus. You know, people ask me that all the time. I broke my arm, why did a fire truck show up, right? So that's good to know. So here in the valley, the firefighters are actually the paramedics. Yep, that's correct. Um, we, uh, we have the medics right on the truck, and so as far as response go, you know, our goal is to get to your, to your emergency within four minutes or less. Uh, and on most occasions, we do that. Um, so it's important to have, we do a lot of cross training, so there's a lot of different skill sets that we learn throughout our career. Um, and uh, most, you know, to, to get into this profession, you've got to be an EMT, and then later you would typically become a paramedic. So yeah. what are we doing with that butter, Scott? Right now we're going to uh, get this garlic uh, sautéed and golden brown. And I probably should have had this going a little bit sooner. So it's kind of my bad, but 
Um, this is going to make bring the liquid part of the marinade that we're going to inject into this turkey. So we've got a, a cube and a half of butter, some minced garlic, and then rosemary, thyme, and sage. And then when it's all said and done, it will go back in the Vitamix, blend up, and then we'll be able to inject that into the bird. And then we're taking that bird outside and we're going to deep fry it? And we're going to deep fry it. That's excellent. right. Excellent. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. <laughs> Uh, we have the 100 Club of Arizona watching. Thank you for the 100 Club of Arizona yes. for watching. I hope you guys are getting some good uh, fire safety tips as well as some good uh, cooking tips. And I know my wife is watching, and I know that she's going to expect me to inject a turkey this year. So I've never done that before, uh, but it looks like I'm going to the store to buy myself a big needle. <laughs> big <laughs> wow, yeah, it's on camera. That, that's a, that is a big, big injector. Although, I gotta say, that is a lot of butter right there. Yeah, I get in your way, don't I? <laughs> yeah, so it is a lot of butter, right? So, um, yeah, there's no such thing as too much butter, though. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely the way. It's Thanksgiving, right? You know, we're. This is the time to splurge, right? Absolutely. We'll go back to working out next week. Well, it's keto. It's keto, yeah. You can make bulletproof coffee with this. So, what could go wrong? Cast iron. Cast iron, yep. Retains flavor. It's your best friend in the kitchen. Scott, how long have you been on the job? So I've been on with Peoria Fire Medical for about 14 and a half years. Came through the academy in 2004 uh, in the summer, which was, that was pretty hot. All right, Gigi, we are getting to the point where um, we're going to be able to inject soon. All right, so we're taking this butter, this garlic, and we are going to put this Mike, good question. back in the Vitamix. Um, yeah. So... We had a user ask whether we are AIQ. Can you explain what that means and let it, uh, let the users know? Yes, uh, we what? are a available in quarters right now. What does that mean? It means that we are available for a call right now in this station, so we can get a call at any moment, and we will have to <clears throat> jump in our trucks and go. So tell me what happened. So we're in the... Go ahead. I think Fire we can... Hole. Yeah, right, here we go. That is the quietest blender I've ever heard. <laughs> All right, so we're in the middle of cooking dinner. We got everything going on. You get a call. What happens? We have to shut the ovens down. Now, in this particular station, we have two companies. So if one of the company gets a call, the other one can stay and cook. But we always, when we come on shift for 48 hours, we take turns alternating between the ladder truck and the engine who, who shops and who cooks. So in this particular case, it's the engine today. So if they got a call, the ladder cook. But if both trucks get a call, which right. would be any kind of big, take a sign. We have to shut the oven down, shut everything off, cover up our food and go to the call. And get it done as quick as possible, right? To get out the yeah. door. Yeah, that's, that's... And we usually just assign just one person, the other three are, are going, yeah, if it's getting turned out or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it is, it's... Uh, I, I've been in a fire station one too many times where I walk in and there's a, a table set with food, and not eating, no and there's nobody there. It's like <laughs> they disappeared. The yep. So I guess you guys have a lot of microwave meals. Yeah, or, or we just eat them cold. I mean, it yeah. is what it is. Uh, we, we, been on call that we're, we're we're on that call for a couple hours and we come back and we don't even eat our food yeah and that happens too i can imagine it's kind of hard to come back from some of the things you see and just sit right back down to well you have that too yeah but you know after 18 years we just kind of you get used to it after a while yeah. and eat food's still delicious yeah <laughs> still I gotta gotcha. eat gotcha all right so what do we just make time. it looks like uh looks so, like some kind of green soup yeah, so it's not the most pleasant to the eyes, but it's it's pleasant to the taste buds. And so. it smells good for those of you at home that cannot sniff. smell a vision as I heard earlier. Any particular technique to injecting, move it around and squeeze? Um, yeah, just, again, focusing on the breast. Um, you want to get as much flavor into the breast as possible. And the challenge with this marinade is that um, you have minced garlic that does not always want to 
cooperate. And so we, uh, you'll watch me fighting with this syringe right now as, as some of that minced garlic is, is trying to fight me for, for position. Here we go. I want to say uh, thanks to Nicole, Edgar, and Vanessa who are watching right now. We are getting set. Very next step is to go out and deep fry. So hang on. Uh, we are going to go out there and we are going to get this going. But it's got to be good, right, Scott? We're not oh, skipping any gotta steps. Be, yeah, gotta we're, be not, good. we're not skipping yeah. any steps here. We're going to inject that turkey. Heading back outside, getting ready for that deep fry time. So what you missed is we used a dry rub for the exterior, and you can just use the dry rub of your choice. And now we're just going to talk about what's going on here with the fryer. Again, we measured this oil. It's at the line we want it to be. It's at the temperature we want it to be. So we're we're cooking at 350. Now, you want to you want to do this with with long sleeves on, some gloves and some eye protection. So that's why you see me putting this jacket on, and I'm putting some gloves on. You're going to see me standing back. But wait, because Scotty, I have not everybody has turnout coats at home. It's okay. You just want long sleeves. You want to protect your skin, right? So that's, that's all you need at home. Okay. Um, okay, so we're at 350 degrees on the oil temp. We've got the, the, the burners off. That's really important when you're dropping the turkey. You, want, you don't want that flame going. In case it does spill over, you are safe to, uh, to spill over and you're not going to cause a huge fire. Get a good grip because the last thing you want to do is drop this into the oil and the oil splashes up on your face. And so what you want to do is to have a hanger like this. It's really handy. You can manipulate the bird and you want to go very slow into the oil. And so I'm just watching how the oil is reacting to the bird and I'm taking my time. I'm, not, I'm in no rush to leave this position. As, as I just want that oil to the temperature to adjust because it's having a reaction now to the temperature of the meat versus the temperature of the oil. And so it can get kind of violent. So you just want to take your time and let it do its thing. If you go too fast, that's when you're going to have it boil over. All right, we're looking good. I'm happy with that. We're off to the races and now we want to get that, that, temp, that temperature to, to maintain. So we've got to get that, uh, that pilot light to light back up. Do we have that lighter? Yeah, I'll grab it. Oh, it's on that corner. Dave Harley that just handed him the lighter. It's all a team effort around here. So this fryer, also to kind of important to note out, this fryer has a timer on it. And it's a 20 minute timer. So if that timer runs out, it will automatically turn that flame off. Um, but that's not enough for us because, as far as time-wise goes, because you want to you want to cook these things for about three to four minutes per pound. So obviously, if you got a 10-pound turkey, you're going to go 40 minutes. Uh, in 20 minutes, wouldn't cut. So you're going to have to babysit this to make sure that your fryer doesn't turn off. So, um, yeah, we we probably want to babysit it anyway. We have to watch the temperature during the. We do. Yeah, if it gets too hot, right, then you'll you'll burn your turkey. So also keep in mind when you. Uh, when you drop that, that cold bird into the hot oil, it's going to take your oil temperature down. So we were at 350. If you look now, we've dropped down to 300. So we need it to come back up. But yeah, we don't want it to spike at, say, 450 or 400. Um, so we're going to have to come and make sure we're, we're babysitting this. And, this and, and the area in which we decided to, to fry, right, we, we didn't have anything that was close by. We're, we're outside of the structure. Uh, we're away from big trees, and so this was an ideal spot. We're not on a wood deck right. where if, if we did have a fire, you know, we have, you know, uh, contents that are going to start catching on fire as well. So this is an ideal scenario of how you want to fry your turkey. Away from your house. Don't do it on your back patio. Get out away from the, away from the structure and stay safe. So I know a lot of you guys at home, first of all, thank you so much for watching. I know a lot of you at home are going to be deep frying a turkey. Hopefully you learned something. Please be careful this holiday season. Watch your kids, especially around the kitchen. Keep a safe zone in your kitchen. And if you're going to deep fry a turkey, make sure that you do it the right way. If you don't know what you're doing, maybe it's best to put that turkey in the oven or do some good solid research before you do it. Because I've got a crew of firefighters here uh, frying this turkey and it's still, uh, you know, they still had all the safety equipment 
uh, around and taking every precaution. So thank you guys so much for giving us a little bit of education. I think we're going to go inside through the magic of television right now. Yeah, so we've got a little secret for you. Follow us and we'll show you what we got going on. So we have already cooked and fried a turkey and we are ready to roll. So all of our dishes are ready, the table is set, and we're excited because everyone's hungry. So let's see, what this, uh, let's see what this Thanksgiving meal looks like. It's almost like unwrapping our Christmas presents, right? <laughs> see what we got here. I saw that being cooked outside. Oh yeah, look at that. Here you go, so Aunt Wendy. One, Here one of the traditions Randy. of the I'll fire station this. then is we call chow. Oh. So I'm going to do that right now. Chow, 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 chow. come get your turkey. Up. Oh. Got a call. Oh. And well, for whoever asked go. if so. we were AIQ, we are available in quarters and it looks like we're going. Hey, thank you guys very thank much. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to eat while you're not here. I... Well, Tim, there's no, no sense in us eating cold I was going to say, we Kyle, is down. there... Uh, hey, we got some cameramen here. You guys want to come and sit and join us for, for dinner? Bye, guys. We're going to enjoy your food. Thank you to everybody for watching.